Hey and welcome to The Red Panda Talk. I'm Francesca and I'm one of the community managers at Planet Zoo and today we've teamed up with Shepworth Wildlife Park to celebrate the Planet Zoo Wetlands Animal Pack launch by having a little look at some of the animals that you can play in Planet Zoo. So, E, what can you tell us about red pandas? Well, good day, folks. Um, red pandas are one of my favourite animals, um, and uh, they are unfortunately endangered in the wild. So, what we do at Shepworth Wildlife Conservation Charity is fundraise for an organisation called the Red Panda Network. Now, they work in home range countries to give people an alternative livelihood to poaching because unfortunately these animals are poached for their fur. So uh, we, uh, we fundraise for them and they pay local people a salary to be on anti-poaching patrols uh, and to educate people about how unique and special the red panda is. They also pe give people fuel efficient ovens so they don't need to cut down as much firewood uh, to heat their homes and to cook their food. They only need a twelfth of the amount of firewood they would normally need with these fuel efficient ovens. So we think it's a really great uh, conservation organisation that we can support um, and they provide an economic incentive, a reason to keep red pandas around now and into the future. Um, so we're very, very proud to support that organization. Mm -hmm. Now they are unique and special. There's thought to be only between 2,500 and 10,000 left in the wild. You can see she's chowing down on grapes here. This is Sundara, by the way. She is our uh, female. She's eight years old. She lives here with her partner, Ago, who we're going to see in a moment. Mm -hmm. Ago's only three. Now, that difference in age is a little bit problematic. We would like them to be a breeding couple, but Sundara at age eight, she's sort of a middle-aged red panda. She's quite sensible, she's quite set in her ways, but Ago is still kind of a teenage boy. Uh, he runs around uh, and she really doesn't have a lot of time for his nonsense. Oh. <laughs> so we have seen them um, lying together. We've seen them sniffing each other's scent marks. Um, and that's all good signs for breeding in the future, but we haven't actually seen the uh, <coughs> activity that you would need to make baby pandas. Okay. Um, we're very hopeful though that that might happen in the future, maybe once he matures a little bit. Um, and she obviously very much wants to be a mother because oh. very often uh, she will do behaviors such as building a nest. She'll go up, she'll snap off tree branches um, and she'll take them into her nest and, and do those sorts of behaviors. Oh. So um, obviously we're hoping that they will become parents, we'd, uh, we'd love to have cubs here. You can see how cute the adults are, yeah. um, you can imagine how cute the babies are, uh, absolutely wow. adorable things. Now she's really into her grapes right now, um, you right. can see that she, uh, she loves those. We actually save them as a bit of a treat for training um, and a bit of a treat right now so we can see her up close, but mostly they're going to be eating bamboo, so hopefully okay. we'll get a bit of a shot later of them eating that bamboo. They eat um, mostly bamboo, also we give them some veggies, and that means that they are a, um, a herbivorous species. However, have you ever had a, a, a tomato and a fruit salad? No, no. not say I have. <laughs> Nevertheless, scientists consider tomatoes to be a fruit. Right. And exactly the same way, these guys have a herbivorous diet, but they're considered by scientists to be a carnivore. Now the reason they're considered a carnivore is they have carnivore-like teeth, and they have carnivore-like claws. I can believe that for sure. <laughs> yep. Um, and they've evolved from the same sorts of animals that dogs and cats have evolved from. Oh. Now they are in their own family group within the carnivore order. They're called Alluridae. Alluridae, uh, their scientific name Allurus fulgens is Latin for shining cat or fire-colored cat. But they're not in the cat family. Okay. They're also known as the bear cat, but they're not in the bear family. They're also known as the Firefox, but they're not in the dog family. Um, they are in their own family group, as I said, and they are unique. They're the only species found in that family group. Wow. Now, every other carnivore species um, is in a family group that has multiple other species in it. So, for example, the bear family has polar bears, yeah. spectacled bears, panda bears. Um, the cat family has tigers and lions and lynxes and so on. But there's no other closely related animal to the red panda. They might remind you a little bit of something though. If you have a look at the big head and the buffy tail, 
The closest living relative is actually a raccoon. No. That's correct. But there's a major difference. These paws are very big and broad, and if you think about a raccoon's hands, yeah. they're sort of nimble, a yeah, bit like a monkey's hands. Grabby. <laughs> now, would you like to high-five a red panda? I would love to high-five a red panda. So you're going to put panda. your hand up like this? Okay, you try that. High-five. <laughs> Thank you for high-fiving me. Good job. So you've said they're not bears, but why are they called a panda? Oh, that's a really good question. These guys were actually called pandas before the giant panda was. Oh, wow. So it was in the 1820s that Westerners discovered the red panda. And at that point, they said, um, they asked the local people what they were called. And the local people said they were called something that sounds a bit like panda. And so in the 1820s, in the 1830s, in the 1840s, and in the 1850s, if you had known what a panda was, um, you would have thought it was one of these. It wasn't until 50 years later in the 1870s that the giant panda was discovered. At that point, scientists said, well, it also eats bamboo. It's also found in China. It's probably the same thing. So they said, let's call it the giant panda, and this will become the red or the lesser panda. But actually, it's not related very closely at all, and they're what, we're, they're what we call the original or first or best panda. <laughs> Definitely the best panda. And now, all the grapes have run out. Now, very often um, people say to me, you've got such a wonderful relationship with the red pandas. And um, I'd love to think that I do, but actually the red pandas have a relationship with grapes. As <laughs> soon as the grapes are gone, you saw she stuck her nose in the pouch. Um, she realized the grapes were gone, and now she knows, no, nope, it's time for bamboo. So if you have a look at the way she's using her paw, she's hooking it around a branch of bamboo and pulling it down towards her face. And then she's using her tongue, curling her tongue underneath each leaf and pulling it into her mouth. Now that's how they get through approximately 20,000 leaves of bamboo wow. each per day. It's a phenomenal amount. Um, and uh, it actually amounts to about half their body weight every day. Oh now, goodness. in comparison, we only eat about 2% of our body weight every day. So it's a huge bulk that they're eating. But they've got a very, very fast digestive system. So it's two hours from in to out. <laughs> Basically, they eat, they get fully full, they go up into the trees, they have a nap. After two hours, they're ready for that to come out the other end. And then they start the process all over again. So it's a bulky amount. The two of them together make about half a bucket of poop a day. Oh my goodness. But it is actually the most inoffensive poop in the zoo. It's only okay. spent two hours inside them. It's just made of bamboo leaves, so it actually comes out smelling not too bad at all. Okay, good to know. We hope you enjoyed the Red Pandas talk to celebrate the launch of the Planet Zoo Wetlands Animal Pack. If you'd like to support the Shepherd Wildlife Conservation Charity, you can do so using the links below. But for now, that's all from me.